All right, so for this tutorial, we're gonna go ahead and make a bottom skin for a wing. This is one of the larger layups we've done in these tutorial videos so far. Um, and this is a little unconventional because we're gonna be using a 45 degree weave, or cut rather, of the carbon fiber. So we're gonna have to wet the piece out on the mold instead of by hand because this piece, you can see here if I unravel this, it's a little excessively large, so if we go to peel this up from the table, what it's going to do is it's going to be a little like a Chinese finger trap here, and it's just going to flex on us, and we aren't going to be able to hold the 45 degree uh, fiber orientation. So that's what we're going to do in terms of wetting the pieces out, but in terms of the materials we're going to use, we're going to use pretty much all the materials we have available to us, including Kevlar, regular carbon fiber, fiberglass, and the special stuff which we haven't used in any of these videos yet, this carbon fiber veal or tissue, whatever you want to call it, it doesn't have any particular direction, it's just really, really thin tissue, it's made out of carbon fiber, it's just going to give a nice finish um, without painting the material, and you can see it's really, really, really light, that flows down nicely. So we're going to go ahead and mix up some epoxy and get this thing started. Alright, so we're going to start by mixing up 200 grams of our standard laminating resin here with our slow cure hardener. And again, as I've said before, just want to make sure we get this as accurate as possible because the integrity of the uh, epoxy really depends on this. So we're going to go ahead and use a nice big time compressor on this one instead of one of those flimsy little uh, popsicle sticks like we've used before. So we're going to get 80 grams of this stuff. When you mix these larger amounts, you have to uh, move a little quicker, even though we're losing the, using the uh, slow hardener. Just because of the sheer amount, the increased heat will make this step cure quicker. But it's nothing to really worry about. Alright, so we've got all 280 grams of the good stuff mixed up here. So I'll just set that aside for a second. Now the three fiberglass pieces we have are going to go on the uh, tip of this wing. And we have three pieces that are cut differently from each other. There's about a half inch, each piece is, each consecutive piece is about a half inch bigger than the previous one because we don't want uh, all the layers building up right at the same spot. So the smallest piece is going to be the first piece we uh, go ahead and lay down. So actually for these pieces we're going to these are, these are the only pieces that we're going to lay up or wet out separately on uh, some film on the table. So we'll do those here in just a second. But first, we're going to go ahead and take our carbon fiber tissue or veal or whatever, veil, whatever you want to call it. Um, and we're going to add just a little bit of epoxy to this just to hold it down because it hardly takes any to hold it down, but surprisingly it'll absorb a lot more epoxy than you really want it to, and it'll just end up being a waste. So just want to put a little bit. Okay, maybe that might be a little bit more immediate, but that's okay. Alright, so we've got some epoxy on here, and we need a squeegee first, actually. Alright, so without going into too much detail, um, we have to put the carbon fiber only to a particular spot on this wing, so we just need to line this up first. It's not important for all layups, just for this one in particular. But, I'm just going to go and take the squeegee, just spread this nice and thin, just enough to kind of get it to stick to the mold. We don't want to deal with it coming up a lot here. Get it right into this leading edge. Now. Some carbon fiber tissue will fall apart when you squeegee it out. Um, luckily, we purchased some stuff that doesn't seem to do that. Um, so you just have to be careful if you have that, that type. So got that laid down there. I've got another piece here. I'm going to do the same too. We'll have a little bit of overlap, maybe about half an inch or so. 
make sure we get epoxy in all four corners. Leading edge. Right at the root. Just kind of spread that out. Nice and thin. That stuff doesn't really wrinkle that bad, but if it does, you can just use your fingers to, and hands to uh, push those wrinkles out. All right, and then we have this one extra little piece here that is for the very trailing edge. And this stuff is so thin, you can just rip it to whatever size you need conveniently enough. And again, we're just going to stick with about a half inch overlap. That's all we really need. This stuff. It's not really structural, it's just for good looks. Alright, so that's that. Now it's time for our first layer of fiberglass. Alright, so we've got our first wedding piece of fiberglass here. Again, the smallest one because we want them to overlap each one consecutively. And we have a, I've got a line mark on here, you can't really see it, but it kind of lets me know where to put the uh, fiberglass. It's just like a silver sharpie on the black mold. So we take a half inch overlap with that, lay it down on there, work out any wrinkles. videos we've got this little kink here in the corner that we're gonna have to cut some little uh, relief cuts into to get it to fit in no big deal it's really the only cut we're gonna have to make the entire time except for the other layers I guess and again if you're having trouble with the uh, fabric sticking to the leading edge you can take a, get a little bit of epoxy on your fingertips just kind of put it on that leading edge. The excess will be soaked up, of course, by the uh, breather. So it's not a big deal. Alright, so that's the first layer of fiberglass. Alright, so now that we've got this uh, first layer of fiberglass down and the carbon fiber tissue, now it's time to get our main skin, which is this 45 degree cut carbon fiber. So, again, Got to line it with this uh, line that I have drawn on the side. Actually, I have a backwards here. Got to flip it around. And we want to try and keep this 45 degree orientation as much as possible, but we can only for humans we can only do so good with this. So got to get this line as good as we can here. And again, this is dry carbon fiber. This is not wet yet. You may not be able to tell from the camera here, but this stuff is really, really, really flexible. The uh, fiber orientation is not easily um, held. It compresses and twists and pretty much everything. So, get it as good as we can. Make sure there's no wrinkles, just lay it down flat. Now again, you probably don't really need gloves for this part because it's not, there's not enough epoxy to soak through yet. You don't have to get perfect because once we get the epoxy on here, we can adjust it further. But, all right, that's that. Now, I'm gonna get kind of an up close video here of how this is wet out. Um, and Eric here is going to do the uh, wetting out of the fabric while I grab the camera to record. Okay, so you can see that Eric just went ahead and poured a pretty large amount of epoxy on there, which is just exactly what we wanted. Still want to save some for our other layers. And it's just lightly pressing on the carbon fiber to get that epoxy wetted out. And 
And again, you just want to be somewhat gentle with the fabric to preserve that 45 degree orientation, which is uh, not sure I would say the optimal for composite skins, but it's definitely better than 90-90. So that's what we go with. Like I said earlier, this is a very non-traditional method of wetting this out because people will probably tell you that you're going to have excess epoxy weight, which you don't want, but we figure it's going to be soaked a lot into the um, carbon fiber tissue that we just laid down previous and also up through the breather fabric, which hopefully we don't have too much excess, but there's not really any other way to do this unless we had pre-preg, which we don't really have facilities here for, so that's why we're doing it this way. Okay, so we've got our next piece of fiberglass here. We're going to go ahead and do an additional about half inch overlap on the previous piece of fiberglass that we did. Again, cut the uh, relief, or, uh, relief cuts in the fiberglass so it tucks into this corner better. One more layer of fiberglass to go ahead and attach here. All right, so we have our main skin, we have our tip of fiberglass here. Now what we want to do is reinforce the area where the spar is going to go to allow for sanding. What we're going to use for that is just some standard unicarbon strip here. And additionally, we have mounting points for the wing, which we're going to reinforce under uh, I guess heavier shear loads, and there I go unraveling the Kevlar here. But we're going to go ahead and put that where the bolts are going to go through to help prevent them from ripping out and increase the strength a little bit. Along with this extra layer of carbon fiber that we're also going to put right at the root. And this is also a 45 degree cut piece. And we're going to wet these out the exact same as we've done. Um, well, actually, we're going to wet these out like the fiberglass because that's a small piece, and the 45 isn't going to really get that messed up by that. Now, all of my markings are now covered up now that we have this uh, carbon fiber on here. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to go get a, a uh, square here. Jerry, square for me. Thank you. And I have marked on here the location that's supposed to be. This is obviously going to get covered with glue, so we're going to clean it off when we're done. No big deal. So this piece. Just to uh, save on materials, we're going to go ahead and wet this piece right on the mold here. And again, we don't want it to stretch any past into this fiberglass here. So we're going to go ahead and lay it down here, get it roughly lined up. Now, what you do to check to make sure this is straight <laughs> is just use your eyes. Just look down at the mold, and I didn't even get it close. So. We're going to go ahead and use this to get it roughly where it's supposed to be. This is a slightly oversized, so it's not too big a deal, but we want to get it somewhat close. Now we look 
down, see that it's close enough. And I'm going to go ahead and have Eric put this piece out. Here's this piece we had cut earlier for the room here. Go ahead and lay this down. Now we have this one final strip here that is the exact width of the spar, so the placement has got to be a little more accurate than we just did. So, carry this out all the way to the fiberglass. And this stuff is a little easier to lay down straight because it's straight up unicarbon. Unlike the other stuff, it was um, 90 and 90 weave carbon, just plain weave. This will be a little easier to work with. Still a little bit different. So again, use the square here to get it just where we want it. Alright, so while Eric's wetting that piece out, I'm going to go ahead and just trim off some of this excess here so it doesn't fold over the edges and get our piece stuck to the mold. And we have our final two pieces here of Kevlar. We're going to go ahead and wet out just like a fiberglass. And see, so there we go. We mixed just a little bit of extra epoxy, but that's pretty good for a guess. Well, an educated guess, I guess you can call it. I'm going to have to kind of peel up these, uh, what we just did here, just a little bit to see where these markings are. So I know where to put the Kevlar. And this is just standard plain weave Kevlar. So it's just like the cat the or the carbon fiber. Just place those pieces down, just like carbon fiber or fiberglass. And that'll do it. Um, sometimes you can place it underneath the carbon fiber. Actually, just for the sake of good looks, I am actually going to peel this up and I should have done this earlier, but it's no big deal. I'll place it underneath the carbon fiber. Just so we don't have to look at that. Or for that matter, sand it. Carbon or Kevlar doesn't sand very easily. You can sand the epoxy right out of the Kevlar, but you can't sand the sand the Kevlar away. So, all right. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do one last check with this square to make sure our carbon fiber is in the right place. You can do one last visual check, just looking down the end. It looks good. It's perfect, actually. So, got this. Now, I want to forget the release. This is pretty easy installation, but important nonetheless. That piece of Eric down there. Now, these pieces are cut extra large because they are just scrap. I need to cut them quite this large if you're going to do a layup. But you want to make sure you cover all your fabric. And you need to be careful not to mess up your fiber orientation underneath this. But you do want to give it light press just to get it to stick a little. Make things a little easier on yourself. Now again, we've got this uh, crease here. Since this release is not the least bit flexible, we're going to have to cut some relief cuts in there. I'm going to go ahead and cut some of this excess off here because we don't need it. Oops. Make sure it sticks really well to your leading edge there. And 
that'll do it for the release. Now, one last step, we've got the breather. So, like I talked about earlier, for every layer of carbon fiber as you have maybe one layer of breather, but this stuff's, this stuff is thicker, so I would go ahead and go with two layers of carbon fiber for, the, for one layer. But, since we have more right where the spar goes, we've got just this strip, which we're going to lay down first. Full length there. It's cut extra big, no big deal. And then we've got an extra piece here where the root is to cover that Kevlar and that extra layer of carbon fiber. And then we've got a blanket piece to cover the entire thing. All right, so that is that. Now we are ready to put this in a vacuum bag, vacuum it up, and uh, see how it turns out. All right, so we've got this breather covering the fabric. Now what we need to do is put our vacuum pump nozzle little thing somewhere on the part where it's not going to affect the layout. So right here on the corner, Perfect. It's on the breather. It uh, doesn't affect any of the carbon fiber. We're good to go. All right. So what we're gonna do? Is we're gonna put this giant mold in here. The end without the valve first, because we want to run the vacuum pump on this end of the table. Now, depending on your mold, you gotta be a little careful here because the ends can be really sharp and puncture the back. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna kind of hold the uh, breather around our really sharp edges of this mold because before we made it. So, should, uh, for the most part, solve our problems. But our vacuum pump is strong enough that even if it's a little tiny hole, it's no big deal. I need it. Alright, so, there's the systems here. Go ahead and slide this bag.
Let's take a little bit more. All right. So now you can readjust that. It's not quite in the right spot. You can go ahead and be kind of rough with it. Make sure it really gets pressed into that leading edge there. One thing about this um, carbon fiber tissue is it's not very uh, sandable, let's just say. It just sands right off a special piece of sandpaper. It's meant for an unpainted finish. If you're going to paint, you do not want to use this tissue. this regular meter stick here and I'm just gonna start the uh, leading edge here for the root rather. You just gotta kind of get it started. right here on the leading edge of the tip. You can rip that fiberglass pretty easily, so you just want to be a little careful. Alright. So there we go. Comes off nice and clean. Now if you pull this out early, like, it's been a couple days since I put this in here, but 
say if it was 24 hours, you'd want to set this somewhere flat so it doesn't go warping itself if it's not fully cured. But other than that, that's how you make a skin using that.